Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the witches and wizards of times past. I am of course referring to ghosts. I'm going to start with an introduction on what exactly our deceased friends are, and shortly after, I'm going to segue into how exactly one becomes a ghost. According to Pottermore, in the world of Harry Potter, a ghost is the transparent, three-dimensional imprint of a deceased witch or wizard, which continues to exist in the mortal world. Throughout the Harry Potter books and films, ghosts are quite prevalent, particularly at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. In fact, we see them right at the beginning of the series, when they appear in the Great Hall, shocking first years who had never seen a ghost before. For Harry, a boy that had only just learned about the wizarding world, seeing ghosts was a real trip. There are lots of ghosts in the wizarding world, but the main ones we're introduced to in the series live at Hogwarts. Nearly Headless Nick, Moaning Myrtle, The Bloody Baron, The Grey Lady, The Fat Friar, Professor Binns, and Sir Patrick Delaney Podmore all inhabit the Hogwarts castle, each tied to the mortal world for their own unique reasons. So there are ghosts literally floating around, but the question is, why? Sure, they're deceased witches and wizards, but what makes them so unique? Why do they remain in the mortal world when so many others disappear altogether? After Sirius dies, Harry becomes increasingly curious with regards to what exactly it is that causes souls to remain in the land of the living, venturing to find nearly headless Nick in search of answers. Oh, very well, he, Nick, said, looking resigned. I can't pretend I haven't been expecting it. Expecting what? Harry asked. You to come and find me, said Nick. It happens sometimes when somebody has suffered a loss. Well, said Harry, refusing to be deflected. You were right, I've, I've come to find you. Nick said nothing. It's, said Harry, who was finding this more awkward than he had anticipated. It's just, you're dead, but you're still here, aren't you? Nick sighed and continued to gaze out at the grounds. That's right, isn't it? Harry urged him. You died, but I'm talking to you. You can walk around Hogwarts and everything, can't you? Yes, said nearly headless Nick quietly. I can walk and talk, yes. So you came back, didn't you? Said Harry urgently. People can come back, right? As ghosts? They don't have to disappear completely. Well, he added impatiently when Nick continued to say nothing. Nearly headless Nick hesitated, then said, Not everyone can come back as a ghost. What do you mean? Said Harry quickly. Only, only wizards. Oh, said Harry, and he almost laughed with relief. Well, that's okay then, the person I'm asking about is a wizard, so he can come back, right? Nick turned away from the window and looked mournfully at Harry. He won't come back. Who? Sirius Black, said Nick. But you did, said Harry angrily. You came back, you're dead and you didn't disappear. Wizards can leave an imprint of themselves upon the earth, to walk palely where their living selves once trod, said Nick miserably. But very few wizards choose that path. Why not, said Harry. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Sirius won't care if it's unusual. He'll come back. I know he will. I was afraid of death, said Nick. I chose to remain behind. I sometimes wonder whether I oughtn't have. Well, that is neither here nor there. In fact, I am neither here nor there. What Nick explains to Harry here is that in order to remain in the land of the living as a ghost, you must either be a witch or wizard. That's the primary piece of criteria. However, he also explains that remaining as a ghost isn't all that it appears to be. In fact, in the above passage, Nick himself questions his decision to remain in the land of the living. Here's the thing about remaining as a ghost. You are just a shell of your former self, kind of similar to the shades produced by the resurrection stone. You aren't alive and you aren't dead, which means that you can never truly move on. It's a bit of an empty existence. Nick knows that Sirius wouldn't become a ghost because he trusts that Sirius has enough common sense not to choose that sort of existence even if it means saying goodbye to his loved ones for good. Per Pottermore, muggles cannot come back as ghosts, and the wisest witches and wizards choose not to. It is those with unfinished business, whether in the form of fear, guilt, regrets, or overt attachment to the material world, who refuse to move on to the next dimension. As explained above, those who decide to return to the mortal world as a ghost usually only do so because they have unfinished business. Presumably, this outstanding business is important enough to prevent them from moving on to the next dimension. Should a ghost choose to remain in the land of the living, however, they should expect a very different existence than what they had during their mortality. 
the existence of a ghost is rather shunted, as they are no longer able to derive any kind of physical pleasure, as well as incapable of learning new things. Perhaps worse than any other aspect, however, it has been expressed that ghosts harbour any sort of resentments that they had from their mortality for the remainder of their existence, rendering them entirely incapable of moving past things. Doesn't sound like any kind of an existence to me. Additionally, while they exist and do have a semblance of a physical form in the land of the living, ghosts are mostly incapable of affecting objects beyond water, fire, and air, in which they can create disturbances. When ghosts seamlessly pass through solid objects, it causes the immediate vicinity around them to feel very cold. Witches and wizards are also far more likely to pick up on the presence of a ghost than a muggle, which makes sense since ghosts are magical people that have moved on. According to Pottermore, muggles who insist that they see ghosts in perfect focus are either A. Lying, or B. Wizards showing off, and in flagrant breach of the International Statute of Secrecy. In short, being a ghost basically sucks. You're in this weird limbo state where you've chosen to stay in the land of the living to resolve unfinished business, but you're entirely unable to get past things, which seems to contradict staying in the first place. It also appears to be an entirely conscious decision, as both Myrtle and Nick highlighted that it was their choice to stay. They were brought back to the world of the living voluntarily. Nick said it himself. He was afraid of death. For context, here are a few of the reasons that ghosts of Hogwarts stayed behind. Nearly Headless Nick was a 15th century nobleman that fell in love with Lady Grieve, who was a lady in waiting. However, when Nick attempted to fix her crooked teeth with a spell, his spell backfired, and Grieve grew tusks instead. Nick was subsequently sentenced to death. Given the premature nature of his own demise, I can see why he would want to stick around, or why he would have felt that his business was unresolved. The Bloody Baron murdered Helena Ravenclaw after she refused his advances. After killing her, he took his own life. The chains that the Bloody Baron has on him were an act of penitence for the actions that he took with Helena. I imagine he chose to remain in the land of the living so that he could repent his actions for the rest of eternity. Professor Binns, Hogwarts History of Magic professor, died but never even realized. He fell asleep in front of the fire one night and showed up to class the next morning in ghost form as if nothing ever happened. Binns' unresolved business is clearly handing out assignments to students. The fat friar, who was a jolly man in life, was executed by his fellow churchmen for showcasing his magical abilities. He was able to cure pox and pull rabbits out of their communion cup, and they didn't take to this. A jolly man, I imagine he stuck around just to help out the students of the school. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it was a mistake any wizard could make, who was tired and caught on the hop. One piffling error and then to my terror, I found myself facing the chop.